Hello and welcome once again to our uh, weekly message from the Arnott Gospel Hall. And over the last few weeks, up until Easter comes, we're going to be looking at some of the seven sayings of the cross. And you might wonder why we would take up these subjects. Well, of course, it gives us a real insight into uh, what happened at Calvary and uh, how that was uh, dealt with by God uh, at the cross of Calvary and what the Lord Jesus endured at Calvary's cross on behalf of the people and behalf of us. So let's just read uh, a few verses of scripture together first of all found in Matthew chapter 27 and verse 45 and we begin to read at verse 45 which says now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And some of them that stood there, when they heard that, they say, this man calleth for Elias. And straightway one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed, and gave it him to drink. And the rest said, Let be, let us see whether Elias will come to save him. And so here is one, uh, or uh, let's we'll say the fourth saying uh, of the cross in order. Uh, so it's in, it's, these are interesting sayings. They're worthwhile paying attention to. Um, and they tell us something about the uh, the Lord Jesus and how he the, the the cross of Calvary went for him. And so let's just think about these words that he said. First of all, he says, my God, my God. And so he's addressing God. And interestingly, what was interesting to think about why he didn't address his father. Well, of course, in, in his relationship, God was not only his father, but was also his God. Uh, and it's interesting to think that um, he, he addresses him in this way on this occasion. And why we might think, why does he do that? Well, of course, um, it is uh, God who is offended by sin, first of all, by our sin. And it's God who requires payment for sin, our sin. And it's God who cannot countenance sin in any shape, way or form. So while Jesus was bearing our sins in his own body on Calvary, God abandoned him. He turned away from him because he was bearing our sin. That's quite traumatic to think about, isn't it? It's quite remarkable to think about that the Lord Jesus bore our sins on Calvary's cross. He was abandoned for us. He was forsaken for us. And you might say he he could easily have said from the cross, why did Judas forsake me? Because he had. Judas forsook him uh, and uh, went and uh, took money to, to give him uh, over to the authorities. And so he could have said, Judas, why have you forsaken me? He could have said about another one of his disciples, Peter, why have you forsaken me? But it wasn't Peter that he uh, was thinking about here. He could have said that in front of, about all of the folks who followed him because the scripture tells us they all forsook him and fled. Uh, and so he was abandoned uh, by people. Uh, the people just recently, shortly before the cross, uh, the Lord Jesus had been making his way into Jerusalem uh, and they uh, shouted, Hosanna, uh, to, in the highest, Hosanna. Uh, and they laid down their uh, coats uh, before him, and cast palm trees before him as he entered into Jerusalem, uh, he, the, the one that cometh in the name of the Lord. But just now everyone had forsaken him and fled. And so he could have been considering these things, but he wasn't. He was considering the abandonment, the forsaking of God. Uh, and so one of the, the remarkable things of the, about Calvary is 
that the Lord Jesus took the abandonment of God for us. Uh, we could be abandoned. We could rightly have been abandoned by God because of our sin, because he can't look on sin, he can't countenance sin, he can't be in the presence of sin. All these were um, dreadful slights against the Son of God, all these abandonments that uh, he received at the hands of men. But the fact that God forsook him was the most difficult to bear because God was the person who he was most in touch with. He was in touch with all of the time, every day, all day. There was never a time when the Lord Jesus was uh, in any way abandoned by God until it came to Calvary. Uh, this is my son, says the, says the scripture. The Bible tells us that God spoke from heaven. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Uh, and so we, we marvel at the thought that the Lord Jesus was abandoned uh, at Calvary. And so it must have been difficult to bear. One of the hymn writers, a man uh, has, has written, top, a man called Augustus Top Lady has written uh, this uh, verse, written a number of hymns, but this lovely verse in one of his hymns says this, if thou hast my discharge procured and freely in my place endured the whole of wrath divine, payment God will not twice demand, first at my bleeding surety's hand and then again at mine. So Augustus Top Lady had grasped the remarkable value of what the Lord Jesus had done at Calvary. And here's what he says, that he has my place endured the whole of wrath divine. The whole of wrath divine. And so there's not a person in this world who can't come to the Lord Jesus for salvation because he has endured the whole of wrath divine. Uh, and so if you today are a, a, a sinner who realises their need, then you can come freely to the Lord Jesus. You can come freely before God and know that, the, that what the Lord Jesus did at Calvary was sufficient uh, to meet your need uh, before God. Uh, and so God was angry because of sin, but Jesus bore that anger and that wrath for me. As we consider this remarkable statement from the Lord Jesus on the cross, we can say, he really loves us. He really loves us. He was abandoned so we could be accepted. There's something to think about. He endured the darkness that we might enjoy the light. He asked the question that we've been thinking about so we could have the answer to our need. So how do we come into the benefit of the work of the Lord Jesus that he accomplished on the cross of Calvary? When he was forsaken and abandoned by God for us. Well, here's how we do it. We believe that what was accomplished at Calvary is sufficient to cleanse from sin. To cleanse me, to cleanse you personally from our sin. We believe that what was accomplished there will allow God to receive us into his family. We believe that uh, what was accomplished there will allow God to cancel out your debt and take away the guilt. The blessing we receive when we accept the Lord Jesus as our saviour, the blessings are immense. No more sin to be accounted for. We are redeemed or purchased back to God. We are made just or we are justified by faith in the Lord Jesus. The ransom has been paid. The guilt caused by committing sin is removed. The desire to commit sin diminishes. The presence of God and the Holy Spirit guiding our lives. 
the fear of death is gone. Eternal life begins. And very much more than all of that. What a remarkable thing it is to come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as Saviour. What a remarkable work the Lord Jesus Christ did when he was on Calvary's cross that we might have our sins forgiven. The fact that he was abandoned. The fact that we can now be accepted in the Lord Jesus. If we confess our sins, says the scripture, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. How wonderful it would be today if you were to understand that you're a sinner. You're a sinner before God and you need his salvation. Will you accept him today? Will you take him as your personal saviour? For to do so would bring us into the benefit of all of these things we've just considered. We pray that you will do so today for his name's sake. Thanks for listening.